never heard of it, but this metal is powering your phone, your car, and even your country's defense. I'm Lindsay Melchick with Stockhouse Publishing, and today we're going to pull back the curtain and take you into one of the most critical materials that is shaping modern life today, tungsten. And we're doing it right here in Portugal at the Almonte Industries Mine, where innovation, history, and global supply chain security collide. My journey began in Vancouver, BC, Canada, with a flight to Frankfurt, and then onward to Lisbon. From Lisbon, it was a scenic two and a half hour drive through the Portuguese countryside to reach the legendary Panascara Mine. As we arrived at the doorsteps of Panascara, the weight of history settled in almost instantly. This was more than just a mine. It was a legacy carved into the mountains of Portugal. Waiting to greet us was Antonio Carrera de Sá, Chief Executive Officer. Well, hello. Thank hello, you for having nice us. Nice to see you around. Thank you. Decades ago, Antonio began his career right here at Panascara. Over the years, he journeyed through countless mines, holding nearly every role imaginable in the industry. Though he had long since retired, when El Monte called him back, Antonio didn't hesitate. Returning to the very place where his journey began was more than a job, it was a homecoming. I had the honor of sitting down with Antonio as he shared memories, insights, and the soul of a mine that has defined much of his life. When it starts, was nothing around. So we really built a community where the workers were living here, where the hospital, where the medical, everything was here. So even so passing his times, this creates this familiar atmosphere and people still living, there's still a lot of them living here. So this family atmosphere keeps going. Five generations. Five generations. Amazing. Five generations. Next up, we met Manuel de Sousa Pacheco, the technical and underground mining manager with over 20 years of deep, hands-on knowledge in mine operations and safety. Before stepping foot underground, Manuel walked through a detailed safety briefing and an overview of the mine's intricate layout, a blueprint of the world beneath our feet. We will go down the ramp to level one and we will visit the production area here in level one and then down the ramp to level two that is 560 meters above okay. sea level. Manuel had us geared up and ready for the depths below. Coveralls, hard hats, reflective vests, safety goggles, and tall rubber boots. No safety detail was overlooked. In we go. Let's go. Let's go. See you later. Oh, amazing. Six hundred twenty meters above sea level. Yeah. This, this is, is the, the access to the conveyor belt. Conveyor belt is down here. We will see today the starting of this conveyor. Belt. Oh, I'm excited! But this is level three. We're gonna go to level three. Yeah. Today we'll go to level three. We'll oh man! All the way. <laughs> what an adventure! At Panascara, diesel is the lifeblood of the mine. It's hauled by truck through narrow, waterlogged tunnels. Deep underground in a still reinforced chamber, the explosives are kept far from everything else. And we use three kinds of explosives. Most of it is bulk explosive. Okay. But if there is water, yep. that bulk explosive is less dense than water, so it will float, it will not work That's well. Okay. So we need to use a uh, more uh, dense explosive. Detonators are here. Smart. Smart. Yeah, it's mandatory by law. Yeah, no. I can see why. <laughs> I'll be honest, standing there, you feel it. A silent force that could move mountains. Now we arrive to the intersection of the ramp with level one. We are in a Y in the road. Which way are we going? <laughs> no doubt. Level okay. One. Well, no doubt. Okay. And then at the end, we will come from 
So two. where does this one lead to now? We will go to check the production area here in level one. All right, let's go okay. check it out. Let's go. Now, did you draw this? Yes. Good job. No. I'm the supervisor. <laughs> I know. <laughs> There's water everywhere. It pools in the low points, seeps through the rocks, and at times rises above the ankle. Do you keep this water? We treat the water. We recycle. Yeah. We use, we use what we need, and then the rest is going to the river. The river. And how many people are in their mine at one time, do you think? It's in the first shift that we have the logistics and everything. So it would be close to 70, 80 percent or so. Okay, yeah. so you're never alone. No, no, you're never alone. Uh, and for safety reasons, you should not go underground alone. Fair you enough. always take someone with you. So at the top of the ramp, we will see not one, but two veins. And then we will follow one of the veins and see the production area that we started a few months ago. I'm excited. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> that is a massive vein. Look how big that, this goes on forever. Last night we blast here. Oh. Uh, this is the result of the blasting. First thing in the morning, we put water to okay. wet all the material to avoid dust when picking with the, the machine. We feed the ore beans, and then on level two, we have the wagons picking the material to go to the main ore bin. It's not a very thick vein, it's about 20 centimeters, but it's a very rich vein. So That's this is, right? This is, this is wolframite. That's All amazing. of the black is wolframite. And it's quite actually dense. Like Very it's... dense, yes. Now, is this um, magnetic? This is a little bit magnetic. So, so you will end, take this? Yes. And you, so, what happens then? From the mine, everything is mixed to the, to the plant. Okay. So only in the plant we will separate the metals. First we separate the barren rock and the quartz from the metals. Yes. And at the end we separate all the metals between the metals. But this is a good chunk of what we want. Yes. So what will you do now? So normally we would drill, blast and make to the orbin. And then all the way drumming to the, to the surface, to the conveyor belt to the surface. So I'm just going to put this in my pocket then. <laughs> they are marking the diagram. The That's the blasting, drill holes? Blasting diagram, yes. So these are the bits that do the contact with the rock to do the drill holes. So the machine has the rods and the shanks and the hammer. And this will do the contact with the rock with water injection to clean the cuttings. And we'll do a drill hole about 2.5 meters. So you can see the little divots in there from this? Yeah. And this is made of what? This is normal steel, but with tungsten carbide buttons. Made with tungsten <laughs> in a tungsten mine. Yeah. Who'd have thunk? 
That's incredible. And then they put the explosive in yes. there and boom. Yes. So we saw the jaw crusher, the crushing area, and this is the, the end of our underground visit. The end of our underground mine visit. So, All yes. right, we're gonna jump in here and head back up to yes, surface. Absolutely. Let's go. Let's go. After hours underground, we emerged from the mine with Manuel. Boots caked in clay, gear marked with the dust of working legacy, and minds brimming with a deeper understanding of what lies beneath. The Panascara mine doesn't just produce rock, it delivers one of the most critical metals of our time, tungsten. Harder than steel, with one of the highest melting points of any element, tungsten is essential to everything from aerospace and military applications to semiconductors and green tech innovation. And as the world races towards electrification and global tensions reframe supply chains, demand for conflict-free, ethically sourced tungsten has never been greater. Almonte industry sits at the center of that shift, not just here in Portugal, but around the world. With operations spanning Europe and Asia, Almonte is one of the few companies globally positioned to supply the West with the strategic resource, responsibility, sustainability, and independently. Above ground, the rumble of machinery replaces the echo of tunnels, but the energy is just as alive. We've arrived at the heart of Panascara's surface operations, the processing plant where raw ore becomes refined value. Here, we're met by engineer Emil Corfu, who walks us through the systems, the structure and scale of everything Almonte has built. This plant is where centuries-old mining meets modern precision. Every day, approximately 2,500 tons of ore are produced, a strong result that speaks to the efficiency, endurance and evolution of this operation. Panascara has been running for over 130 years, a mine that incredibly has operated with virtually no interruptions across generations. It's not just historic, it's resilient. But what truly sets this site apart isn't just its age or volume, it's the quality. Panascara produces the most valuable, most pure and most homogenized wolframite concentrate in the world. In the global tungsten market, this is as close to perfection as it gets. For Emil and the team, it's not just about output, it's about precision purpose and pride in delivering a resource that powers industries, innovations and nations. So we have had quite the tour here. You have the most fascinating facility between the mine and between here. You have this really locked in. I have a couple, a few questions for you though. So, you know, when the ore comes up to the surface, what happens then? When the ROM, the ore, run out of mine is coming on the plant, you have to crush everything at 20 millimeters okay. and wash after that on the screens to recover all the slimes which contain some wolframite. And after that, send to the shaking tables. Shaking tables or the recovery is 90, 80%. So you produce a pre-concentrate on the shaking tables. And after that, you crush the concentrate from heavy media separation two millimeters to liberate more wolframite and once again feed the shaking tables. With that pre-concentrate from shaking tables, you feed the final concentration where is the final separations of the ore. So, and produce after that a 75% WO3, which is the purest wolframite in the world. So the purest concentrate of 75% 
how do you make sure that that recovery is really getting pulled from that raw material? Because we have all kinds of separations, all the separation that exist in the world in any, any kind of plants we have here. So you use gravimetric separation, you use flotation on the tables also, which is the single plant in the world that is making flotation on the tables. We are using heavy media separation, which is also the single plant in the world for wolframite using a heavy media separation, which is bought from the diamonds mines from South Africa. And also we have uh, the last separation, it's a magnetic, high intensity magnetic separators, which is increasing the concentrate from 50% to 75% WO3. My goodness. Yeah. That's why the recovery of the plant it's more or less 80%, which is the biggest one in the world. Biggest one in the world. Now, you're dealing with a lot of machinery. You're dealing with a lot of raw material. Are there any sustainability or environmental processes that are already built in? Yeah, we have to, to, to keep, to, to know that we, uh, in the war, you have a lot of heavy metals. Right. Like arsenic, iron, uh, copper, uh, zinc, and so on. We recover the copper, making a concentrate and sell it. And uh, also tin, we recover the tin and making a concentrate and sell it. And after that, arsenic and the other heavy metals, we are the position on the slimes them, coarse and slimes them. So you, you have to send it there which is our environment control. We controlling each year the, the, the position of the quartz tailings and slime tailings after that. The water, the, the whole water that they are using in the plant, it's closed circuit. We treat the same water and after that, send it once again on the tables because this is a plant where 100% water. You don't have water, the plant is not working. So we have to keep the water, the same water, pumping and treatment the same water on the plant. The same so, water we saw in the mine, yeah, you're so using here. You don't contaminate anything, rivers around the plant or something Beautiful. like that, or the earth or underground. So that's, that's this is the environment, what they're speaking about. It's heavy metals and the water. Amazing. Well, thank yeah. you so much. This has okay. been quite the tour. Okay. It would be easy to call this just another mine, but after spending time here, you realize Panascara is so much more. We sat with Antonio Carrera de Sa, a man whose mining journey began right here decades ago. We walked the tunnels with Manuel Pacheco, who showed us the depth of both the mine and the passion behind it. And above ground, Emil Corfu pulled back the curtain on one of the most efficient and respected tungsten processing plants in the world. We saw firsthand how this mine, built with intention and run with care, produces not only volume, but the most pure, homogenized wolframite concentrate anywhere on Earth. As global demand for tungsten accelerates, driven by technology, defense and energy transitions, companies around the world are racing to secure reliable, conflict-free supply. And Almonte Industries is leading that race.